What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, we got another chest radiograph interpretation coming your way right now. Let's dive in. All right, so as I mentioned, welcome to part two of respiratory coach chest radiograph interpretations. We're gonna be breaking down another abnormal chest x-ray in this video, but before I break it down, I'm gonna give you a chance to see and test your own knowledge can you tell and identify what type of chest x-ray we are looking at? Here's your chest x-rays. There one here is a point of reference as normal. The other one is abnormal. Which one is which? Go ahead and feel free to pause this video right now. I'm going to continue on and explain which one is normal, which one is abnormal, and we'll go from there. Right off the bat, this x-ray on your right is the normal chest x-ray. We know it's normal because we see that it is well aerated. There is good aeration throughout both lung fields. We've got good costophrenic angles here that represent the diaphragms. We've got a heart that does not appear to be enlarged. We've got clavicles. Everything meets at the, at the spinal column. This is, this is a good quality chest x-ray as well as a normal chest x-ray. Now, when, let me get those marks off for you. When we look over here to the x-ray on the left, what we notice is clearly there is something either going on on the right or the left. Which one is it? What side is the abnormality occurring on? And the answer to this question is that the right side is the impaired side. And when I say right side, let's first of all talk about this. Because anytime you're talking about a unilateral chest x-ray, you have to recognize that when I say the right side is the impairment or the impaired side, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm talking about that in reference to the patient. So if I'm looking at this patient, this is their right, this is their left. This is the left side of the chest, this is the right side of the chest. Okay, now, the right side is the impaired side. Now, we, we recognize that and we, we see, okay, well, why do you know, how do you know that's impaired? Well, let's talk about this. Because some of you may be looking at this going, well, the left side looks atelectatic. It looks like more white. So we have a side over here that's more white and a side over here that's more black. So is it atelectasis, consolidation on the left? Or is it air on the right? Well, the answer is, is that this is a pneumothorax on the right, okay? This is 100% a right-sided pneumothorax. Now, the reason I know that is because when I look at this lung field, I see where it's extremely hyperlucent and I see no lung markings. So when I look at this, there are no lung markings present. That tells me that this lung that is supposed to be over here and look like this, you can tell it, they don't look the same. And that's because there is now air in the pleural space and it is pushing everything over. Now, think about that. It's pushing as the air comes into this, it moves everything this away. And this is air in the pleural space. The fact that this air is compressing everything over is why this side of the lung field, the left side, appears to be more radiopaque because it's being squeezed from the air in the pleural space on the right side of the chest. Now, let's, let's look at this and talk about some details of this x-ray. Number one, we see an increased radiolucency. Look how black this is compared to this. This is a problem. Now, the second thing you may notice is look at the costophrenic angles. The normal one over here comes down and it comes to a sharp point. But look at this one. Look at the right costophrenic angle, how it comes way down and then back up. Look how much sharper the right hemidiaphragm, the right costophrenic angle appears compared to normal. This is what we call a deep sulcus sign. What happens is, is this air is building up in this pleural space on the right side and it's pushing things over, but it's also pushing down. 
And this air is finding its way down into that claustrophrenic angle of that pleural space. Now, this is a problem and maybe one that you did or didn't notice right off the bat. But if you look over here on the left, you can kind of see the claustrophrenic angle right here. It's kind of hard because everything's being squeezed. Remember, when we're looking at a normal chest x-ray, the right hemidiaphragm is always slightly higher than the left. But when we look over here, we clearly see where the right hemidiaphragm is lower than the left, which tells you something is depressing it. Something is pushing it down, and that makes it abnormal. So that deep sulcus sign is a key indicator in this x-ray of why and what is going on, and it just further supports the fact that this is indeed a pneumothorax. Now, I told you earlier that the air in this pleural space is pushing everything over. And I know it's probably hard to kind of see through the video, but I want to point something out to you. Let's look over here at normal. We've got this trachea that comes down, and we see a bifurcation of the carina about right there. It's midline. Let, let's look at this. Let's see if we can identify the carina on this chest x-ray as well as the trachea. Here it is right here. I'm gonna just going to draw it for you. The left goes right there and the right goes right there. So what you see here is, is where this trachea is midline with the spinal column. You look over here. The spinal column is over here. And the, carina, the trachea and the carina, everything is being pushed over. Look at the heart border. It's right here. The right heart border is basically to the left of the spinal column. Where over here, you see the right heart border over here where it is supposed to be seen, which is just slightly to the, on the right side of the spinal column. And so we see here where we've got lots of things here. All of them point to a pneumothorax. I love seeing this, this big tracheal shift. I love being able to illustrate that because when you look for the trachea, you usually are typically looking for it right here, but you have to get creative with this one and recognize that it is pushed over and we have a massive tracheal shift going on. This is probably a tension pneumothorax, if I just had to guess. A large tension pneumothorax heart, everything's being pushed over. Now, this is going to be a problem for this patient if we don't treat it soon. Because what's going to happen is as this air continues to accumulate on this side, everything's going to continue to be squeezed over. And as it does so, the heart is going to be compressed and squeezed even more. This is going to affect the filling of the ventricles as well as the contractility of the ventricles. So you're going to see a hypotensive patient here. This blood pressure is going to be dropping as the heart can no longer function normally because of all of this air squeezing and pushing on it. So hypotension, tachycardia, radiolucent, depressed right hemidiaphragm, tracheal shift. You're thinking tension pneumothorax. We need to needle decompress or get a chest tube in this patient as quickly as possible or the outcome's not going to be good. That's what a pneumothorax x-ray looks like. Let's recap for you here one more time just so we understand what are the key findings from a pneumothorax and specifically when we're talking about a tension pneumothorax. The first one here, increased radiolucency with absent lung markings. This is talking about these regions right here. All of this, very, very black, not a whole lot, no, no lung markings at all, just a lot of black empty space because the pleural space is filled with air. Number two is the deep sulcus. Notice again, the sharp turn down in the costophrenic angle. That's a problem that supports the pneumothorax. And then the last one, as we've mentioned before, is the tracheal shift away from the problem, away from the side of the pneumothorax. Those are the three key findings that you want to look for when identifying a pneumothorax and making quick actions. This patient needs help very, very quickly. And it's going to be you, hopefully, that may catch this and say, hey, 
we need to treat this. Needle decompress or chest tube. Okay, that's a pneumothorax. Those are the three key findings. Hope you found this helpful. Hey, this is where you can reach me. You can find me at all of the socials, Instagram, TikTok, Coach RRT on Twitter, and always send me an email at respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Also, feel free to join my texting platform, 817-968-7035. All you have to do is text that number right there. You'll be asked a few questions, and then from there on, it's all me saying, hey, here's some inspiration, here's some education, here's some motivation. Hey, happy birthday. I tell you all those things on this texting platform, just here to further connect and, and, and continue to grow along with this wonderful profession of respiratory therapy. This is how you contact me. Now, you know the game. I have a cheat sheet available for these key chest x-ray findings. If you want it, all you have to do is send an email to respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Now, I'm out here putting out this content to aid you and make your, your, your time through respiratory therapy school or maybe even support you after respiratory therapy school for, for hopefully your own personal benefits so that you feel more confident standing at the bedside. If you found any value in this video, do me a favor. Hit the like, leave me a comment, but most importantly, if you're not already subscribed, please do so now. And then everybody, share this on multiple platforms. We got to get these words out to help people be more confident, more knowledgeable, and overall better respiratory therapists. Hey, you know how we end every single time. Average is easy. Don't be it.